Robin Lundberg Show, and I got to tell you, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And we just got hit right in our veins by the X-Men 97 trailer. That was lit. That's as good as it gets. You know, there's a lot of crap going on in the world. I talked about it last night. Um, you know, real life stuff, stuff that that makes me emotional and is heavy and and no fun. And then there's real life stuff that we're all dealing with. Like I've said, you know, I've shared my struggles on this show. I, I've said everybody's dealing with some sort of struggle. Um, and sometimes it's tough. Sometimes you're not feeling well. Somebody's sick. You're you're broke. You lose your job. Whatever the case, you get hit by a car. Whatever the case may be. You get COVID on a day-to-day basis. There are problems. There are trials and tribulations. But then there are those things that give you the warm fuzzies. I think I had a teacher who used to call them the warm fuzzies. And boy, oh boy, did the X-Men 97 trailer do that for me. I hope it did it for you too. I mean, that was so good. We've all done the, the theme song in our head, right? da na 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 Who doesn't want to do that? Tell Cyclops I made him a convertible. I mean, you cannot say there were many things better in life, if anything better in life, than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and X-Men back-to-back on a Saturday morning. And I've said on this show before, if you didn't grow up in that era, I don't think you realized how big the X-Men were. The X-Men have the best comics ever. Best stories ever, best characters ever, and the best freaking cartoon ever. And they're running it back. Smartest move Marvel's made in a minute. You can see the X-Men push coming. You know, they they dropped the uh, Fantastic Four stuff on Valentine's Day, but the X-Men stuff is coming. In Deadpool 3, you got Wolverine, and then this X-Men thing coming in, in March. Let's watch the trailer together. How about that? That sounds like a... Um, a thing to, to do. I'm going to present it right now. Let's watch the trailer as a, a shared experience here on this show so we can have those warm fuzzies together. Watch the series finale oh. of X-Men next we'll Saturday back. morning. Check your local listing. It picks right up where it left off. Look at that action figure. I remember running to the store to get those action figures. Goodbye. I am Beast. proud of you oh, Beast. Jubilee. X-Men. Even more. Fate lies in our hands now. Now, now. Today, tough. That's tough. Ooh. Like the animation. What's we the have to stay vigilant. Version? The professor entrusted us with his dream. Professor X is dead. Yeah. No matter how dark it is, we must believe in each other. Oh, here they come. My club. Gambit. Form. Wolverine. We get this done by working together as a team. Jeez, Bub. All Keep in the buzzing blackboard. in my ear. Oh, he's pregnant. This team is hard. To me, my X-Men. And then the Magneto. Magneto reveal. The last will and testament of Charles Xavier. Everything he built now belongs to me. There's that extra twist that's thrown on at the end with Magneto. I don't know, guys. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? I don't really got anything else to say except for that's that's that nostalgia. And the good thing about it is the nostalgia will be used to build because they now get to bring the X-Men back. I talked about Wolverine and Hulk the other day, um, and, and we've talked about Deadpool on here. But I really think this, I mean, this is how Marvel gets saved. It really is. It's how Marvel gets saved because, let's be honest, they weren't going to win with those C characters the Eternals, and the Marvels. No offense to any of those specific characters. Some of them are cool. Or Shung, uh, Shang-Chi or any of those characters. They weren't going to win with those characters. They're not, 
you only the, the magic of Guardians of the Galaxy was lightning in a bottle. That they were able to and and even the way they turned Iron Man from a B plus comic character to an A plus movie character. But they needed the heavy hitters and the Fantastic Four that to an extent. But the X Men, that's the real weapon. That's the real cavalry. That's like getting Spider Man. It's like getting Spider Man all over. I I did. Oh, uh, Berkey says, "Can you play it?" I didn't see it. I did play it for you, bud. <laughs> it looks awesome. Damn, it really does. It really does. So, I mean, there's not much more to add. I, mean, I, I don't know how anybody could not like that. I don't know how anybody could dislike what we just saw there, that X-Men 97 trailer. And it's the kind of thing, it just puts you in a good mood to see something like that. It's pretty damn cool. It's pretty damn cool. Um, and like I said, it, it does, it pulls at that, it takes you back to a certain place. Because we all watch that. At that time, at least I think everybody of a certain age watched that X Men cartoon and has the fondest of memories. For me, it was. I mean, I'm trying to think of what what really like fires the synapses there. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon into the X Men cartoon, and probably Monday Night Raw in that era. Probably Monday Night Raw in that era. Kevin Zwicker says, outside of a few movies here and there, Marvel has been dropping a lot of mid since Endgame. I've said that. Everybody agrees with that, I think. I mean, since Endgame, I'm trying to think of what was good. I thought Black Panther was good. I don't care what anybody says. I thought that was really good. Um, I thought... I liked Guardians 3, but not as much as everybody else. Obviously, Spider-Man No Way Home was an event movie. And that was great in the theaters. I'm trying to think if there's even anything else. Oh, I liked um, I liked Multiverse of Madness, and I liked WandaVision. WandaVision was excellent. I know they're doing Loki stuff in in Deadpool three. I did not really rock with um, the Loki series. I thought it was boring, and most of the Marvel stuff has been an overstretched mess since then. An overstretched mess since then, but the X Men can save it. To me, my X-Men, they can save it. Meanwhile, in sports tonight, we got Caitlin Clark going for the record, or she's going to get the record tonight is a better way to say it. Caitlin Clark is, what, eight points away? I don't know if that game is tipped off yet. Um, she's going to pass Kelsey Plum. She just did pass Kelsey Plum. I'm looking at it right now. Caitlin Clark is now the all-time leading scorer in women's college basketball history. Right here. It has just happened. I mean, it's not a surprise. Everybody knew that was going to happen. Um, but Caitlin Clark is something else. She is something else because she, not only is she the biggest star in women's college basketball, she's the biggest star in college sports easily. I can't even think of what's happening in the men's in men's college basketball right now. What's happening in men's college basketball right now? Not much. Not much. But Caitlin Clark has put women's college basketball on her and Angel Reese and what they did last year. But Caitlin Clark is a true, like, phenomenal baller. Like, Game, recognized game. You see that. Real, recognized real. There's no... She's the best women's basketball player I've ever seen in my life. The same way I can say that about Patrick Mahomes in the NFL without his career being done. She is the best women's basketball player I've ever seen in my life. And her star power is something else. I mean, you see the crowds that gather. You see the ticket prices for like this game and this event. That she had tonight, or some of these other ones that are selling out. There's however many thousand people in the stands. It is, it is something else. It is something to see. And she's got that game. She's got the step back Jays and the pull up threes. I'm very interested to see how she takes that to the WNBA and what that means in the WNBA, what it means for the WNBA. 
because she's the type of talent that could be transformative there. She's the, the, the type of transcendent talent that can change the trajectory of a league in a sport. I mean, I'd buy her shoes. Think I'm not going to, my daughter's not going to want to buy her shoes once she gets there. And that hasn't happened yet. In the, now, there's been some real hoopers in the WNBA. I mean, I love watching Diana Taurasi play. Um, I love watching Sue Bird play. You know, on and on. Asia Wilson right now is a really good player. I mean, there's a lot of good players in the WNBA. And this idea that, you know, women's basketball is inferior. I mean, look, there are physical differences between men and women. Is that okay to say? I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if you're allowed to say that. But there are physical differences between men and women. But the skill level at the WNBA level is is ridiculous. And the talent keeps going up. And now you have a story that people are invested in and have followed for a while. It's not just a new thing that's popping up out of nowhere. I mean, it is kind of what happened with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese is sort of reminiscent of Bird and Magic. Now, no offense to Angel Reese, who is very charismatic, is a national champion, um, is a star in a sense. Like, she presents herself like a star. She's not the player Caitlin Clark is. Caitlin Clark's game is undeniable. And that's why she's captured the imagination of so many people because of how good she is, like how truly special she is. And, and I see people say, they're, you know, not sure how she'll do at the WNBA level. I think I even saw Cheryl Swoops. I don't think there's going to be any, um, any sort of drag for her. Any sort of, uh, you know, adjustment period. She's going to be ready right away. Let me show you the, um, real quick. Let me show you the the bucket. This is the bucket she broke the record on, by the way. Watch this. Here we go. Marshall, here comes Clark. Look at this. How will she go for history? <laughs> I mean, look where she pulled up from. Leading scorer. That is amazing. That is amazing. You sometimes you just gotta like tip your cap. Salute to history. Yeah, I still rock the Nets stuff, by the way. As miserable. They lost by 50 freaking points last night. I know Nets fans are going to want Jock Vaughn fired. And I already got Knicks fans in my mentions sharing some video where um, Josh Hart was wearing a Knicks jersey in front of uh, Mikhail Bridges. It, here it is, actually. Let me, since I'm talking about it, let me show you that clip real quick uh, <laughs> while I mention it. Um, since I, I found it, let, let me see what podcast this is from real fast. This is from the roommates show. Apparently it's called, let me pull it up real fast just to, cause I know the Knicks fans are going to get on me about it anyway. Might as well play it. Here we go. Well, seeing all the, seeing all the, the Nova guys back together. Not really. Cause I still talk to these dudes. Right. You know, it helped, it helped that I went to USA with y'all. Yeah. That was kind of good. That was nice. It? USA. Oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah, my shirt. <laughs> what were you saying? You were saying? Trolling. <laughs> did, did just magically get hot in here or something? Yeah, I was. I, I you know, okay. a little toasty. I'm just wearing a New York Knicks shirt. Obviously, you play for them, so makes sense why you wear it. Your team. Yeah, you know, that's, that's my team. Do you ever get FOMO seeing all the seeing all the the Nova guys back together? So there you go. I, I, it doesn't make me think he's going to play for the um, Knicks, by the way. that That's nothing. That's a nothing clip. But it's still fun. And I get why Knicks, are, uh, Knicks fans like to have a little fun with it. I get it. But it's worth celebrating what Caitlin Clark did today. That is worth a round of applause. Um, because I don't think there's really any argument. She's the best women's basketball player of all time. No question in my mind. Get your comments in because this is the last show of the week, uh, I'll, I'll post some shorts and, and reels and the like, because, you know, that's how you grow these channels, <laughs> if I'm being real with you. But um, 
This is the last live show of the week. The Robin Lundberg Show, Monday through Thursday, here, right here. Same Robin time, same Robin channel. Um, but get your comments in on today's show. If you want to talk about Caitlin Clark and what she just accomplished, if you want to run it back to the top of the show and that X-Men 97 trailer that we've been talking about. And a couple other things I had on, on the rundown for myself. One is this idea of the Lakers bringing in Bronny James just to appease LeBron James, which is sure to rile some people up. There's a report in The Athletic that they would consider it. And I think this is the actual Bronny James's. No, this is a fake. Okay. I thought this was actually Bronny James who tweeted this earlier. It's a Bronny James like fan account. I saw Eminem is making a movie about stands, which is very interesting. I, I want to see that because stand culture is kind of fascinating. I thought this was the real Bronny James for a second who put this out, but it's a, a fan. Uh, but mocking up the, you know, the Jersey share there between father and son. And here's the thing. One, it doesn't appear that Bronny James is NBA ready from what we've seen. I mean, he was never projected to be a high pick in the draft. I know I, I think it's a little unfair to say he would only be drafted because he's LeBron's son. Because what I've seen from him, he has the ability to possibly be a 3 and D guy at the NBA level. He's got a nice looking shot, a nice build, all those things. And that we know those kind of players are very valuable at the NBA level. Very valuable. But um, not too much more than that. And of course, him being LeBron's son is going to help him. I mean, there's no question. It both helps him and hurts him. Because people are going to hate on him because he's LeBron's son. Now, remember, this kid also suffered cardiac arrest last summer. So, he can't, like... Sometimes with sports, we forget real life. Sometimes, like, he is very recently removed from nearly dying, you know? Uh, and you have to not only allow for um, room to have to recover from something like that, but the human aspect of that, how difficult that is to overcome, not just for him, for his family and everything else. Now, LeBron can be a free agent this summer as well. He has a player option for next year, but he can be a free agent this summer and opt out of the, the player option. And that would put him on the open market again. So it's not a coincidence you're hearing the rumors of the Warriors trying to trade for him and the Sixers trying to trade for him. And now the Lakers saying they would bring Bronny James in. And then, I, you know, some Lakers fans will get mad at that and say LeBron's running the show. And all. it depends on where they acquire Bronny James. If he's a second round pick, does it really matter to you that much? If it does keep LeBron James happy? Because for all the acquiescing to LeBron that teams have done, every uniform he's put on, they've won a championship. Hell, the Lakers won the in-season tournament this year. You know, they they... They won the in-season tournament this year. To have the same name of his dad doesn't help pressure and hype. Yeah, I mean, the pressure and the hype are going to be there for LeBron or Bronny. But that's why it's a gift and a curse. You know, it's a gift and a curse. Because, sure, he might be drafted higher than he should be because of who his dad is. But... He also might be hated on more than someone of his ability level and his talent level. And from where I'd seen him projected, he was already going to be an NBA level player. You know, he was already going to be an NBA level player. So we'll see how that shakes out. Doug, the developer, Doug, developer. Hey, Robin, if you could have any of the mutants powers, but you must deal with the drawbacks. Rogue can't touch anyone without killing them. Wolverine ages super slowly. Which mutant would you be? Okay. Um, definitely not Rogue. Definitely not Rogue. Definitely not Cyclops. Uh, there's really no use for Cyclops' powers in everyday life. There's no practical use for Cyclops' powers. 
Same goes for Magneto. As powerful as Magneto is, no practical use. Wolverines actually aren't that bad. You know, like, if you don't have to go through the whole Weapon X experiment and the tortured existence that he's lived and uh, Sabretooth's birthday presents to him, um, Wolverine is a good one. Professor X might be the winner, though. Professor X might be the winner because he has it under total control. He has it under total control. Read minds and, and whatnot. Like, you could make the argument for Jean Grey to the same token, but Jean also has, like, the Phoenix stuff going on. I, I don't want to deal with any of the Phoenix Force stuff and, and everything that, you know, the baggage and unintentionally having people's thoughts in my mind. I, I think she's had more problems with that than Professor X. So I think ultimately I go Professor X. I think the answer is indeed the founder of the X-Men as that X-Men 97 trailer drop today we got um my guy is it uh kev do keep do taylor back in here what's good robin he's he's a new addition to the comment section and so is doug developer i i replied to i replied to doug developers um uh message on youtube the other day and he's now in the chat so it's good to see you well it, it, that's not a function of professor x's powers that he can't walk is it so I, I, I that that's not um that's not related. I don't think that that counts because that's not how he, he's not paralyzed because of his powers. He's paralyzed because of something else that happened with the Shadow King, if I recall, in the comics. But what's good? Send me the what's your comment after that? After the what's good part? What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> so I appreciate the what's good. What's good to everybody? But when you comment in. Give me, uh, give me something to riff off of. Give me something to talk about. Give me something you want to talk about. Um, all those things are, you know, on the table that we've talked about thus far. I've only got one other thing in the rundown. Kevin Zwicker, which non-Marvel studio cinematic universe is worse, DC or the Sony Marvel movies? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So what counts as the Sony Marvel movies? Do you go back to the original Spider-Man? Because those were pretty good. Spider-Man 1 was good. Spider-Man 2 was good. Spider-Man 3 was an abomination. I went to the premiere of that. Oh, that was terrible. That was the emo Peter Parker. And I was never a huge fan of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man because he didn't wisecrack enough. He wasn't extroverted enough as Spider-Man. Um, I didn't hate the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, the first one. I thought Andrew Garfield was a good Spider-Man. I didn't hate the first one. All these. Sony spinoffs are really bad. Um, the Venoms and the Morbiuses. And did that even come out? I don't even know. If, I, I can't say it's bad. I haven't seen it. Or uh, are they still putting out Craven the Hunter? I think they are. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. The answer is the DC ones are worse. Because I'm pretty sure the Spider-Verse movies are Sony movies. And if they count, in, Into the Spider-Verse is up there with the greatest movies I've ever seen. The first one. The second one's really good too, Across the Spider-Verse, but the first one is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. So I would say um, DC has to be worse because of that. And DC also fumbled the bag with the biggest characters. Like Guardians of the Galaxy ran leap, laps around Justice League. And Batman versus Superman was trash. Right? I mean, like the only DC movies that really landed were the Batman movies, for the most part. Now, if I guess if you're saying Batman versus Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, that's close. So it's tough. I mean, there's no right answer there, I guess. Good question. Doug Developer, it would be hilarious if Bronny gets drafted by the Thunder and LeBron has to go to the most boring NBA city ever, LOL. You know, well, first of all, the Thunder are championship contenders, but secondly... It's so funny how this is a thing in the NBA, but it's not in the NFL. I, br I brought this up on Mad Dog. And, and by the way, I was on Mad Dog the last two days. I'll be on Mad Dog, Channel 82, Sirius XM, this Sunday, noon to four, four hours. Um, and in the NFL, you wouldn't say that if somebody got sent to Green Bay or Pittsburgh. In the NBA, you'd act like they were dead if they got sent to Green Bay or Pittsburgh. In the NFL, those are marquee franchises. So it is funny. The, the differences between the two. 
Do you think the next Spider-Man needs to add Miles Morales in? I think that would help the storyline. I think we are going to see Miles Morales in the live-action MCU sooner rather than later. Yes. And what a cool character Miles Morales is. What a what a awesome addition to the lexicon. You know, different racial demographic uh, representation there. Very naturally, you know, sometimes you, you know, a character is recast and you get this back. This is who Miles Morales is, right? This is where he's from. That's where he's born. That's who he is. That's who that character is. And his costume is dope. The Jordans, everything about Miles Morales. He's so relatable too, just like Peter Parker, but in a different way. So I love Miles. You know, what's the, the, the line in the first one? It's a leap of faith, Miles. Kind of what I'm doing here, right? Kind of what I'm doing with my career right now. It's a leap of faith. It's a leap of faith, Miles. Peter Parker to Miles Morales and Robin Lundberg. Keep the comments coming in, guys. This is fun. Uh, one more thing I wanted to get to, just because I saw it right before the show. Smackdown tomorrow night. Make sure you also check out the Needle Wrestling channel. We're going to have a reaction episode, Smackdown, tomorrow night. Um because I'm never not doing something <laughs> tomorrow night. We're going to have that uh, because that's a big SmackDown, perhaps the biggest SmackDown of all time, if you think about it. Uh, here is is the post Roman Reigns put out. I don't know what you read into this, but he just put this out, like right before I went live or as I was live. Tomorrow night. Everything changes. The new bloodline. Oh, the Rock's heel turn. They really screwed up when The Rock first came back. They really did. And I don't think that was on purpose. But man, did that pivot save things. Because this villain heel Rock is sick. And he and Roman Reigns as the new bloodline is also sick. You know, unbelievable where they could go. The potential. I don't even know what they're going to do. Because you could really screw Cody now and get the heat on him. And it would make sense now. You could also have Cody overcome both of them, the final bosses. You could have Cody get screwed and have to beat The Rock. Roman Reigns passes Hulk Hogan. And then Cody beats Roman Reigns. And then you set up Rock Roman Reigns for WrestleMania next year. That's if Cody doesn't finish the story this year. Make sure, uh, guys, if you can, especially you guys who are in the chat every day, do me a favor and like, share, subscribe, you know, comment on the, the video after it's up, too. That would help. Uh, I've seen some of you guys in there doing that. But uh, make sure you hit the like button, too, um, for me. And share with your friends. You know, tell them I, I really like this guy. Check him out. Uh, every little bit you can do helps as I'm, uh, you know, I'm building this from the ground up. I am. And the the return is encouraging, not just like from you guys here, but some of the analytics uh, behind the scenes. And, you know, when you, I didn't really even have a YouTube channel until a few months before I started this, like maybe two months before I started this. And I was just throwing up some shorts. Now I'm doing this too and throwing up the shorts and, you know, we're up into the hundreds of thousands of views and uh, hundreds of hours of watch time and everything. So that's thanks to, to you guys, of course, and whoever else is watching and not commenting and doing that. But if you could like, sh share, subscribe, all those things, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, Moish, any update on your future yet? Any talks with Winthrop? You know what? I should text him. I, should, I, I wonder if I still have his, his number. But hit him up on the stage. I'm going to be on with Ty Butler on Saturday on 98.7 as a guest. He hit me up. Um, but no, no updates as of yet. That doesn't mean there aren't things potentially happening behind the scenes, but nothing I'm sharing um, into the universe yet. Uh, Winthrop, you know, John Winthrop uh, was, he he was the producer for myself and, and Ryan Rucco. And I think he runs the station over there now. So maybe it is worth me hitting him up. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. But hit him up too. You guys bombard him. However you know how to get in touch with him. Doug Developer. What LeBron year did you feel he was in the conversation with MJ? And which year did he become the goat in your eyes? So if you see the 444 and chosen one over there, I've told this story before, but 
2017, my second day at SI, I did a whole LeBron is the best player ever. So in 2017 is when I really put that out there, that he's the best ever, which is a little different than the GOAT. But I started it with the, the Jay-Z line. Hove got flow, though he's no big in pop, but he's close. How am I supposed to win when you got me fighting ghosts? You know, and that's what it felt like for LeBron or it feels like for LeBron um, chasing Jordan, right? And that's in 2017. When did he surpass him as the GOAT? I would say, I mean, for me, it was a while ago. But when do I think you could really say when he passed Kareem? When he passed Kareem, I think is when you could say he passed him as the GOAT. Because then just the resume, it's just like you see what you see with your eyes. You see what you've seen him do with the Cavs and the Heat and the Lakers. You got the MVPs. You got the titles. You got the stats. But then he's the passes Kareem as the NBA's all-time leading scorer and is still going. Uh, find his email. Man, I'm sure it's like john.winthrop at ESPN.com. <laughs> I'll get it from Ruko. I'll get it from Ruko and I'll, I'll send it to you. Where you hit me up uh, privately and I'll, I'll tell you how to get in touch with him. I'm just kidding, John. Uh, and I shouldn't have blown up a spot with the email. I didn't mean to. I was just making a joke. Everybody's email is their name, dot, whatever, at the company they work at. What's your favorite match of all time? That's a good one. Uh Probably Undertaker Michaels, WrestleMania 25. Um, that's up there. Steamboat Savage, WrestleMania 3. Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. The tag match, WrestleMania 17. Um, I know you're not supposed to talk about it. I thought the Brock Lesnar-Roman Reigns match from SummerSlam a couple years ago was unbelievable. That's the kind of match I would show somebody who's not into wrestling. Uh, as is the Johnny Knoxville, Sami Zayn match, and the Bad Bunny match against Damian Priest. Those are just some of them. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing. But finger gun to my head. Uh, I shouldn't even reference guns. After yesterday. Uh, Michaels and Undertaker. WrestleMania 25 would be my answer. But there are so many good ones. There are so many good ones. And the, the this whole Rock and Roman Reigns thing, is, as Jim Ross, as good old JR used to say, business has just picked up. Business has just picked up in the WWE. Business picked up in the Marvel Universe today. X-Men 97, back in full effect. I've been saying back in full effect a lot lately. I don't know what the the real purpose of that phrase is or why, what, what compelled me to do that. Uh, business picked up in college basketball as Caitlin Clark, congratulations to Caitlin Clark, passing Kelsey Plum, now the all-time women's leading scorer, college basketball. Business picking up for the Lakers as they might need to pair <laughs> Bronny James with LeBron James. And like I said, business picking up in the WWE. That's the rundown, guys. Any other questions, comments you got before I get out of here tonight? Because I'm not back until Monday. Um, when I committed to this, you know, I really committed. Monday through Thursday, that's a lot of shows. I'm giving you guys a, a lot of shows, trying to do my best. You know, it's for me too, for you, for everybody, you know. But, um, you know, I wanted to to put that out there, that, that – uh, consistency out there, especially as we get launched and we see what this becomes and how it evolves and what form it takes. But um, Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. If you're just tuning in, please like, subscribe, do all that stuff, share with your friends. But uh, if you don't have any more comments, I'm going to get out of here for tonight. And, and this is the last show of the week. So you got to I'll give you like 30 more seconds to get more comments into the channel. Let me see if anything else has happened while I've been live. Also, that I might want to share or react to really quickly. But I don't, I mean, Caitlin Clark, that's the one that's, that happened in real time tonight. In the first quarter, she had 23 points, apparently. Wow. Is that the truth? This, if you don't follow um, 
big business on Twitter. He's an amazing follow. Very hilarious guy. But according to him, and I would take what he says with a grain of salt, but according to him, <laughs> that was Caitlin Clark's stat line in the, the first quarter of the game tonight as she, she broke the, the record there. Um, let's see. We got a couple more comments. What about Fannie Willis? Uh, who cares? I, I, I tried to follow that for a second, but it feels like a case of people trying to deflect. Like, this is the Georgia prosecutor, for those of you who aren't aware. The prosecutor in Georgia, where the charges are against Trump there. And I... I'm not even, I haven't followed the story that closely because I really don't care about her business. She apparently had a relationship with somebody, a coworker, right? Um, which was inappropriate and fine. But what does that have to do with Donald Trump's case? That's the part that I don't get. Why is everybody acting like this should have anything to do with Donald Trump's case? Kick her out. If she did something, whatever. Like, I, I don't know, maybe she's great at her job. Maybe she's not. I, I, I only know her because of this, right? I only know her because of this. And they should follow the letter of the law or whatever the rules. You know, it is what it is. You break the law. You break the rule. Um, you, you suffer the consequences. That's the way the world works. I hope it doesn't ruin her life. It doesn't feel like something that should ruin her life. But if she has to be removed from this case, she has to be removed from the case. But what does that have to do with the case itself? She didn't, like, create the charge. I mean, she brought the charges, but she didn't create them. So to me... If there's a problem with her, you just put somebody else on it. Seems pretty simple. It doesn't seem like something that needs to be like both sides or like rah, 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 rah. Like every, but everything is rah, 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 rah. Oh, this is vindication for Trump. The Democrats lose. I mean, I saw she was pretty fired up though. I didn't see that. Did you see people debating Sting versus Taker? I'd assume you'd go Undertaker because he wrestled on the bigger stage. Here's something about The Undertaker. The Undertaker, he touched so many generations. And I was not the biggest Undertaker fan. Never was. I never was into the whole supernatural gimmick. It was never my thing. I saw the, his first match. I remember seeing his first match, Survivor Series. Uh, 1990, I want to say. He was on the Million Dollar Team with Million Dollar Man. And I think Roddy Piper was on commentary. He goes, look at that big ham hock right there. Yeah, that was The Undertaker's debut. I remember watching that. Because my brother and I, my mom's actually from Mississippi. And my brother and I would go to Mississippi when we were younger. Well, my whole family. But my brother and I would be hanging out in my aunt's bedroom watching wrestling tapes. Because she worked at a video store. So we would rent all these Coliseum home videotapes. And my grandmother was big into wrestling. She had like all the NWA figures like Ric Flair and Arn Anderson and those guys. And I remember watching those tapes and, and remember seeing The Undertaker's debut. This was the era of like where Bret Hart was coming around. Shawn Michaels was coming around. Like I remember the Rockers and the Hart Foundation. I remember I, I learned who Bret Hart was through the Rockers and who Shawn Michaels. I mean, Bret Hart was through the Hart Foundation and who Shawn Michaels was through the Rockers. But I was never the biggest Undertaker fan until I saw the way that character resonated with my son, Raj, my oldest, who dressed up like the Undertaker for Halloween and says the Undertaker is his favorite wrestler. So you think about that. He's nine years old and I'm 42 years old. So for Undertaker to be one of the biggest, I look good for 42, Donnie, uh, to be one of the biggest stars of that time period and then still be one of the, the biggest stars to the point where younger kids gravitate toward him. No disrespect to Sting, who had a, a – I mean, Sting's apex, I would say, is the uh, Crow thing with the NWO and everything. Like, he was – and it's too bad we never got the proper Sting-Undertaker match. And, you know, Sting was the only guy who never really came to WWE at any point. Like, he was there – but it was really past past the prime. So that, that's why I would go with, with Undertaker. Not because he was necessarily on the bigger stage, but because of 
that impact across generations, across generations. All right, guys, that'll do it for me tonight. Um, Appreciate you as always. I'll be back here on Monday. I know it's technically a holiday, but I don't see why that would stop me uh, from coming back. What is presidents? Did we just honor presidents? Uh, That's what it is? I guess so. But I will be back on Monday night. We'll do a Needle Wrestling show tomorrow night after SmackDown. I'll keep the the channel will be active, but make sure you you share, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I, I do truly appreciate you guys, especially you guys like who are now showing up as regulars in the chat every night. Um, a lot of YouTube chats tonight too, which is cool. Um, I'll be back Monday. This is the Robert Lundberg Show, Monday through Thursday here on YouTube. I stream on Facebook and and X as well. But until then, it will be the same Robin time and the same Robin channel. Peace, guys.